Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the ATI Radeon 8500LE 128MB video card. What is included in this package are a couple of cables. These cables are both composite and S-Video. The S-Video cable simply goes plugged directly into the back of the video card and the composite cable goes plugged in via this adapter. The adapter first of all goes plugged into the back of the card then the cable goes plugged into the adapter. You also get Half-Life the game, some software and drivers, the manual and the video card. This video card has a core speed of 250 megahertz and the memory is 3.6 nanosecond memory and that's 250 megahertz as well but it's DDR so it's 500. On the back of the card here we have the S video out as well as a regular VGA connection. Like all the other Radeon series cards, it has fantastic DVD processing. Right here is the chip that's pretty much responsible for the S video out, if you're maybe putting this on a TV, for instance. This chip is called the ATI Rage Theater chip, and it basically controls the video out functions on the card, while the core here actually handles all the DVD processing. What is the big difference between this card, the LE, and the regular 8500 video card? Well, obviously it's price. This one is a lot less expensive than the 8500. However, this one is missing the DVI connection here. So if you have a DVI display, you're out of luck with this card. You also have on the 8500 the dual display support for computer monitors. This one you do not. You have the S video and the regular video, but you cannot do the dual computer display on this video card. You might not be able to do the dual display, but pretty much it has the same as the 8500 card does again, except for that DVI connection on the card itself. All of the Radeon cards have a bunch of technologies, and I'll go through those now just very, very briefly to just give you some idea of what this card does include. It has a true form technology, and what that does is really take the sharp edges off the characters that are inside the 3D games. And the good thing about this true form technology is that it can be used in almost every game on the market, the current ones, even the older games, and even the upcoming games will have this built in, and you will be able to enable it, so you'll be able to get really lifelike characters, especially around the nose area, the head, you know, where it's really, really jaggedy for the most part. Also, there's a technology called Smart Shader, and that enables more complex lighting effects in games, which is always great. There's also a technology called Hyper ZAD2 technology, and what this does is conserves the memory bandwidth for improved performance in demanding application. And there's also a technology here called Charisma Engine 2, and what that does is supports full transformation clipping and lighting at around 62.5 million triangles per second peak processing capability as well as a technology called Pixel Tapestry 2 and that's a rendering engine and it powers an incredible 2.4 gigatexels per second for high fill rates in 32-bit applications at high resolutions. Also as I mentioned before this does have the dual display support but not with the VGA and the DVI. It has a dual display support with the S-Video and the VGA. All of those technologies to most of us are just words. What we really want cards to do is perform well at a reasonable price. Let me now have a look at this card in four benchmarks so you can get some idea how powerful this card actually is. I will be looking at four benchmark programs here today. 3D Mark 2001 Second Edition, Comanche 4 Demo, Quake 3 Arena, and GL Express. In all of these benchmark programs, we'll be using an Athlon XP 2000 Plus CPU. And the 3D Mark 2001 Second Edition result is 8,861. I will be using the following settings in the Comanche 4 Demo. The resolution is at 1024 by 768. The bit depth is at 32, texture compression is checked, I've disabled the V-Sync, 
and hardware shaders are checked as well. And the result at 1024 by 768 is 31.07 frames per second. In the Quake 3 Arena demo, these are the following graphic settings I will be using. A video mode of 1024 by 768, the color depth is at 32 bit, the geometric detail is at high, the texture detail is at max, the texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 167.5 frames per second. The results really speak for themselves here as you've seen. Also with all the ATI products, the 2D quality is simply amazing as well as the DVD functionality. Overall, this is a great product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also be sure to pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com and while you're there you can go in and register if you haven't already in the forums. You can leave your very own suggestions and comments and you can have a look at all the comments which are left by all the members as well as the information on all the products which I video review. Until the next time, take care.